In this video we're going to look at how differential equations can be used to model a real life problem from a mechanics context. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just to read through the information here about the braking of a car which is making an attempt to break the um, land speed record. Once you've finished reading through the information, start the video again. So we're going to try and go through our modeling process to find a solution to this problem. So the first stage is we need to describe the real life problem. Well, that's obviously been done above, but it's worth emphasizing at this point that the first section of braking must be completed within six kilometers to make sure that we don't run out of track. But the maximum deceleration must be less than 90 meters per second squared. Moving on to the second stage, we need to think about the simplifications and assumptions that are going to be made. Well, the first assumption we're certainly going to make is we are going to model the car as if it was a particle. We're also going to assume that the only horizontal force acting on the car is the drag force. And, fairly essentially, we're going to have to assume that the track is straight. And we're going to assume that the driver that we've got can actually tolerate a deceleration of 90 meters per second squared. So we now need to pose the mathematical problem. So the mathematical problem could be rephrased as a particle of mass m kilograms is traveling along a straight line with initial velocity 450 meters per second and is moving under the action of a retarding force of magnitude kmv squared, where k is a constant and v meters per second is the speed of the particle. Determine expressions in terms of k for the maximum deceleration of the particle and the distance that the particle travels in decelerating to 90 meters per second. Deduce the possible values of k if the maximum deceleration must be less than 90 meters per second squared and the distance traveled must be less than 6,000 meters. So that is our mathematical problem that we're going to now try and solve. So there's our particle at t equals naught moving at 450 meters per second and at a later time we've got the particle is moving to the right with a velocity of v to the right and that means that the positive direction for the acceleration must also be shown to the right. And we've got the drag force or the retarding force of size mkv squared acting to the left. If we apply Newton's second law to the right we've got the resultant force to the right is minus mkv squared and that must equal the mass times the acceleration. Dividing through by m, we, ob we obtain minus kv squared equals the acceleration. But the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. So we can say that a is dv by dt. So we've got minus kv squared is equal to dv by dt. So we've got our differential equation there. To solve that differential equation, I'm going to need to get to all of the v's together with the dv by dt term. So that gives me minus k is equal to 1 over v squared times dv by dt. Integrate each side with respect to time. And we obtain the integral of minus k with respect to time is equal to the integral of 1 over v squared dv by dt with respect to time. Now we know that the integral of 1 over v squared dv by dt with respect to time is the same thing as the integral of 1 over v squared with respect to v. So we can write that the integral of minus k with respect to t is the same thing as the integral of 1 over v squared with respect to v. So that tells me that minus kt plus a constant must equal minus 1 over v. Now we know that when t equals naught, we've got v is 450. So 
The equation I've just got will read minus 0 plus c equals minus 1 over 450. In other words, c is minus 1 over 450. So we've got minus kt minus 1 over 450 must equal minus 1 over v, which of course means that 1 over v is the same thing as kt plus 1 over 450, or v is the same thing as 1 over kt plus 1 450th. But v is the rate of change of the displacement. So we can say that dx by dt is equal to 1 over kt plus 1 over 450. And integrating with each side with respect to t will give me x is the integral of 1 over kt plus 1 over 450 with respect to time. That is a fairly straightforward logarithm integral. So we've got x equals 1 over k times by the log of kt plus 1 over 450 plus a constant which I'm writing as alpha. We know that when t equals naught, x is naught, so the equation I've just written down becomes naught must equal 1 over k times the logarithm of 1 over 450 plus alpha. So alpha must be minus 1 over k times the logarithm of 1 over 450. So we've now got x is 1 over k logarithm of kt plus 1 over 450 minus 1 over k logarithm of 1 over 450. Taking out the factor of 1 over k, we've got x equals 1 over k times, in brackets, the logarithm of kt plus 1 over 450 minus the logarithm of 1 over 450. Now remembering our properties of logarithms, we know that if we've got log of a minus log of b, that is the same thing as the logarithm of a divided by b. So I can now say that x is the same thing as 1 over k times by the logarithm of kt plus 1 over 450 divided by 1 over 450. Now that fraction that I've got can be made much, much simpler by multiplying the top and the bottom of that fraction by 450. So I've got x is the same thing as 1 over k times the logarithm of 450 kt plus 1. Now there are two important equations I want to take over to the next page. The first one is the equation 1 over v equals kt plus 1 over 450 and the second one is the equation we got at the bottom of the page which is x equals 1 over k times by the logarithm of 450 kt plus 1. So taking those over to the next page what we're interested in is the distance that the particle travels in decelerating from 450 meters per second down to 90 meters per second. So if we use equation 1 we can say that when v equals 90 we must have 1 over 90 equals kt plus 1 over 450 and that gives me well 1 over 90 is the same thing as 5 over 450 so I've got 5 over 450 equals kt plus 1 over 450 so 4 over 450 must equal kt and now using that in equation 2 is going to tell me that the value of x that I've got is 1 over k times by the logarithm of 450 times kt, which we know is 4 over 450, add 1. In other words, we've got x is 1 over k times the logarithm of 5. Now, for the motion to be permissible, we need the distance to be less than 6,000 meters. So we've got 1 over k times by the logarithm of 5 must be less than 6,000. In other words, k must be greater than the logarithm of 5 
divided by 6000, which means that K must be greater than 0.000268. But at the same time, we've said that the maximum deceleration experienced must be less than 90 meters per second squared. Now the maximum acceleration is going to be when the velocity or speed is at its greatest value, which is 450. So the maximum deceleration that we've got is going to be k times 450 squared. So we need k times 450 squared to be less than 90, which gives me k must be less than 0.000444. .000 Putting the two results together then, we now know then that k must lie between 0.000268 and 0.000444. So we've now got an answer to the mathematical problem. So interpreting that solution then, our solution predicts that the car will be able to brake safely to 90 meters per second within 6,000 meters and with the maximum deceleration being less than 90 meters per second squared, provided our constant k for the drag force satisfies k lies between 0 0.000268 and 0 0.000444. Presumably we've got a wind tunnel which we could test the car in which will probably enable the designers to establish a system of chutes and air brakes which would actually achieve a value of k within the interval of permissible values. Finally, we should be comparing our model with reality and certainly treating the car as a particle is pretty drastic and what's more, some of the components in the car might not be able to tolerate accelerations as high as 90 meters per second squared. I'd be pretty confident in this question to say that further modeling, further information is certainly needed to produce a satisfactory model. But I hope that in the course of this video, we've actually seen how modeling with differential equations can be used in a real life mechanics situation.